Hey everyone, welcome to Trail Sage, and today we're talking about the new Hoka Torn 3s. Now, with every new version of a shoe, you can expect some changes, and as someone who loved the Hoka Torrent 1, I was excited to see what the new version was all about. So far, I've logged over 50 miles on them, testing them in different situations and conditions, and sadly, I've been less than impressed. But that doesn't mean it's a bad shoe, it just means it didn't work out for me. The changes that I've noticed have been subtle, but have made a big impact on how the shoe handled on the terrain that I love to run on. We'll go over the fit, comfort, and traction issues I've been experiencing, but first, let's go over the specs. In a men's 8.5, the Torrent weighed in at 244 grams, which is pretty light. Hoka markets this as a neutral running shoe, and it has a 23mm stack height in the back and 18mm in the front, giving it a 5mm drop. You'll also notice their signature meta rocker curve, which is designed to propel you forward. The outsole hasn't changed much and still features 4mm lugs with some exposed DVA in between. The compound of the rubber has been revamped, and Hoka claims that it's stickier than the previous version, but more on that later. The midsole is constructed using their ProFly cushioning system, which is a dual density foam that's supposed to be softer on the heel and firmer in the forefoot. Moving on to the upper, Hoka says it's now constructed of a single layer mesh, and to protect that mesh, there are clear overlays strategically placed around the bottom of the shoe and around the eyelets to increase durability. There's plenty of soft padding around the heel cup and collar, and the padded tongue is fully gusseted on both sides and extends well past the laces. Finally, the shoes are available in four colorways, however, I didn't see a wide option, so take note of that if you have wide feet. But that's it for the specs, so let's get into my likes. I love that Hoka kept this shoe light. The Torrent has always been a playful, nimble shoe, and the lightweight is a big reason for that. On loose gravel and soft dirt, this shoe really comes alive and wants to get up and go. And while other brands try to save weight by sacrificing comfort in certain areas, the Torrent still offers plenty of padding around the heel, collar, and tongue, making it comfortable to wear. The tread pattern is aggressive, and the 4mm lugs offer plenty of bite when pushing off and turning. The rubber compound also seems to be holding up well, and the exposed EVA shows only minimal wear. And while the mesh is not as breathable as version 1, it still provides plenty of ventilation as you can see here from my breathability test. The overlays offer just enough protection on the sides to minimize abrasions and strengthens the area around the laces, which is a nice touch. But that's it for my likes, so let's move on to my dislikes, starting with the fit. Now this is subjective, but I continue to have issues with lockdown. I thought maybe the shoe needed some break in time, but even after 50 miles, my foot still feels like it wants to come out of the shoe. The only way that I could get the shoe to stay put was to utilize the lower eyelet and really crank down on the laces. However, in doing this, the area around my arch would begin to hurt and cause some numbness in and around my toes. Two, the cushioning is completely stale. Again, I thought it might need to be broken in a little, but it just feels dead. There's no impact absorption, and I find the ride to be harsh. This is a big step back from the Torrent 1, which were way softer and more responsive. Even after 300 plus miles, these still feel better than the new Torrent 3s. Now, if you're looking for less cushioning or you don't want a responsive shoe, then you might like the new version, but for me, I was pretty disappointed. Another letdown was the traction, which is odd because Hoka claimed that they improved the compound. And while this does perform well in dirt, it is terrible on the rocks. Even in completely dry conditions, I found myself struggling to get traction, which is the total opposite of how I felt about the Torrent 1. I thought I was going crazy, so I wanted to figure out a way that I could test each shoe to see if my experience could be validated. I clamped down some coarse grit sandpaper and placed 8 pounds of weight into each shoe. Then I attached the shoes to my scale, which allowed me to monitor how much force it would take to pull the shoes across the sandpaper. I did this several times in each shoe, in both directions. Unsurprisingly, my feelings were confirmed by the data I was able to collect. The Torrent 3s only required 9 pounds of pressure to move the shoe across the sandpaper, while the original Torrent 1s needed 12 pounds of pressure to move it across the same distance. That's a difference of 3 pounds of force between the two. And while that might not seem like a lot, that's a 25% decrease in traction. Just imagine if your full body weight was in the shoes and with impact force, that number could be even worse. And if you are curious, the numbers were about the same for both when I reversed the direction and pulled them from the front. Listen, I know the test isn't perfect, but for me, the scale proved that the experiences that I was having regarding traction were true. Of course, if you've never run in the original Torrents or you don't live in a rocky area, this might not mean that much to you. But for me, this was a huge step back. 
but that's it for my disappointment. So let's move on to something a little bit more pleasing and that's the pricing. At $130, these shoes are still very competitively priced and a pretty good deal. So you might be wondering, would I buy these shoes again? Well, I think the answer is obvious. No, I wouldn't, but it's far too late to return them. So I'll probably relegate these for hiking. For me, I just can't trust that these shoes will do what I need them to do. I love climbing rock scrambles and picking my way through tough rock gardens and there's no way that I would feel confident enough to take these shoes on any of those trails. But like I said, just because it hasn't worked out for me, that doesn't mean they're bad shoes. If you prefer less cushioning in your shoes or you don't live in an area with a lot of rocks, these could be a good shoe for you. And I know I had lockdown issues, but you might find them to be a good match for your feet. I suppose most of my disappointment comes from my bias for the original torrents. It's like I bought these expecting the same kind of performance and feel and instead it turned out to be a letdown. But I guess that's the way it goes sometimes, right? Well, now I'm on the hunt for a new pair of trail runners, so if you have any suggestions, let me know what they are. Well, that does it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ah, oh, God. Let's do that again. <laughs> whoa, whoa, no, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks. It's bus and truck time. Oh, they're stopping right outside the office. Are we safe? <laughs> what are they doing out there? And while that might not seem like a lot, that's a 25% decrease in traction. And while that might not seem like a lot, that's a 25... And while that might not... I just did a bunch of takes and the camera wasn't recording. Oh, amateur. Take. 18? But that's the way it goes sometimes, right? Well, now I'm on the... Like, just as I hit the record button. Well, now I'm on the hunt for a new pair of... That train is so loud. Driving that train high on cocaine. Casey Jones, you better... Watch your speed, trouble ahead, trouble behind, and you know that notion just crossed my mind.